so many people talk about in EMF emissions in the car. Annie asks, uh, new cars have so many detection devices in addition to Bluetooth. Can you explain the different sources of EMFs to be avoided by an EHS person buying a car? Uh, we have a dedicated masterclass in the replay section for this membership that is uh, the cars masterclass. Uh, I don't want to repeat everything in there, but the idea is to try to turn off Bluetooth and you know, try to avoid cars that have a Wi-Fi or a cellular hotspot in there because uh, normally these cannot be turned off, at least in my experience. And I rented many cars at the Avis dealership here in Montreal, and all the GM models came with this amazing Wi-Fi hotspots that you could do nothing about it. It's just there. It's right in your face as you drive, and it keeps lasting you. However, modern cars have so many different sensors in them. Many are in the millimeter wave range that it is hard to mitigate. And I'm just wondering, Brian, quickly, if you have a client who's very electrosensitive, what would you tell them in general about cars? Is there is there a quick answer to that or it's kind of more complicated than that? Yeah, well, they would, you know, first off, you want to, if you, if you have to get a new car or you need it for reliability or whatever, then you want to get the most basic model that doesn't have all the, you know, toys and whistles or whatever yep. that phrases people use, but like they, they need to get the very basic model that, uh, you know, doesn't have all the technology, like when you walk up to the door and just touch the handle, it unlocks and like that kind of stuff. And then also all the radars and everything that are sending out signals. But more than that, um, just looking at the car and how it's designed, you can kind of see like you can you can open up the the um, you know the the front and uh, and see like the hood, and you can see where the engine is and where the motor is going to be spinning when it's running. And if you have a design where that that motor is spinning like toward the front of the car instead of like over towards the driver's seat then you're going to have a lot better results on the magnetic field. Mm. So the motor, the alternator, any motor that's close to the driver's side is going to, you're going to have more of a problem with driving that car. If you're going to be the passenger, then you want to look to like the proximity to the passenger. And for a hybrid car or an electric car, you're looking at not only the, the, like the motors in the electric engine, you're also looking at, okay, where are the batteries located? Because whenever the batteries have current flowing from them to the motors, it's going to create a magnetic field as well. So there's, you know, and then other, other things like seat warmers, there's some seat warmers that are good that test well, like in my Toyota Highlander, they, they don't cause a magnetic field increase at all, but in my Jeep, it does. So, so there's, you know, and there's ways that you can use that where, where like, if you put the seat warmers on while your car is warming up in the winter, it warms up the seat and then you just turn them off and then the magnetic field goes away. Same thing with steering wheel warmers and things like that. So like the less, the less electronics you have, the better. Now, as far as all the Wi-Fi signals and everything, um, I think just avoiding as much of that as possible. Like if, if GM does have like the hotspot installed in every car, that's something that you could see if you can opt out of. Can you guys not activate that? Like leave that off? Does it actually shut off? You actually have to talk to uh, the dealership and, and possibly even the manufacturer and the engineers and start a ticket to, to get them. And that's really the only way that moving forward, we're going to be able to affect these companies is people need to put in official tickets to the manufacturer asking for no, like, I want to, I want you guys to make a car that doesn't have all the Wi-Fi and, and the, this capability. I want to have a wired connection via CarPlay and not have, you know, a hotspot and all the Bluetooth and all the wireless signals. I just want a basic car and it's for privacy reasons. And it's also because for health reasons. And if we combine privacy and health together, it gives them more motivation to meet that market because you've doubled the reasons that people want it. 
So you want it for privacy. You're afraid of the government tracking you and, and your habits and everything because they do that. We know they do that. And we also want it for health reasons because we don't want to be exposed to this radiation. Hey, this is Nick, the EMF guy, Pino. I am the co-creator of the EMF circle, along with my colleague, Brian Hoyer from Shielded Healing. What you saw today, this short video is a preview of the longer interview that we did for our circle members. Every month we have a masterclass like one of these or a Q and a session with me and Brian most of the time. So you get personal support and attention on your EMF reduction reduction journey. So if you want to reduce EMF because you are personally sensitive or you're just trying to take precautionary measures to better your health and minimize the risk associated with wireless and other types of EMFs, then the EMF circle is the place to be. We have a ton of archives now. We have several months worth of Q&As that you can listen back to. Everything is pre -record is recorded. You can either join live or just listen to the replay. So we have a CARS masterclass class. We have a pr free protection masterclass uh, also that we did, and we're going to have several other masterclasses moving forward. So we hope that you join us inside the EMF circle. Just visit emfcircle.com or click the link under the video to join us. I hope to see you then.